Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. Tonight, the 17th ranked Tennessee Volunteers host the Air Force Academy Falcons. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Rocky Top. I'm Randy Smith along with Pat Ryan. Good to have you with us again. Coach Philip Fulmer, the Volunteers, Pat, this week has used two words a lot. Respect and the respect he has for the cadets at the military academies. And, of course, scary to describe the triple option offense. And it is scary. They run a flex bone offense that you have to be extremely disciplined against or they'll run all over the field on you. And the guy that pulls the trigger on that triple option offense, of course, is quarterback Sean Carney. Yeah, Sean Carney, he's the man. He's the guy that makes the flex bone go. He ran for over 700 yards last year and 11 touchdowns. He's also an excellent passer. 2005 went for 1,400 yards and completed a school record 64% of his passes. And he has set a goal for 1,000 yards rushing and 1,000 more passing this year, so he could be very tough. Tennessee defense surprised a lot of people last week against California. They really did. You can see right here some of the stats from last week's game. 64 yards rushing last week. They really held Marshawn Lynch. In oh, they shut Marshawn Lynch down. Not only did they stop the rushing attack, they recorded uh, eight tackles for loss, three sacks, two interceptions. This is a defense that is playing extremely fast. And they'll need to be fast tonight against the triple option. But what about the Volunteers offensively? Of course, the receivers were a big surprise as well. Let's go down to the field to Mike Stoll to talk about the receiving core. Mike? Hey, Randy, thank you very much. And you talk about respect. Tennessee's receivers didn't get any last year. They worked hard in the offseason. You love their production. A bunch of long plays for scores. And they did a great job. Robert Meacham, great, outstanding statistics. Big, long scores. You love the way that he played. Trooper Taylor has these receivers focused and a chip on their shoulder. They're going to go out there and catch the football, and they're going to take it to the defensive backs and make big plays. All right, thank you very much. Mike, we'll be hearing, of course, from him throughout tonight's broadcast. Stay with us. We'll be back with more from Neyland as the Vols kick it off with the Air Force coming up next. And a good crowd on hand at Neyland Stadium this evening as the Air Force dressed in white and Tennessee in orange and white. Tennessee wins the toss. They elected to defer, so the Volunteers will kick off, and Air Force will receive. And there's Coach Fisher DeBerry, the veteran coach. In his 23rd season, he's had a great career as a football coach. Back deep to receive the kick from Will Hoyt will be Jim Ollis and Ty Paffett as we watch Coach Philip Fulmer's Volunteers look to be 2-0 on the year after the game. Will Hoyt is set to kick it off, and we are just about to get underway. And once again, it's football time in Tennessee. Taking it at the two-yard line is number 15, Jim Hollis. Hollis cuts back to the left, crosses the 25, and it'll be first down and 10 for the Air Force Academy. Rico McCoy, the freshman, makes the tackle for the Volunteers. You know, not often do you see your backup quarterback returning kicks. Oh, it's a converted running back from last year. Now is the backup quarterback to Carney. Did a good job bringing that kick back. 28-yard return for Alice. So the Volunteers will be faced with stopping Sean Carney. His 2005 stats, pretty impressive when you consider that he also ran for over 700 yards. There's the pitch. Good yardage out to the 33-yard line. Pickup of about four for Chad Hall, the wingback in this offense. Four-yard very quick. There are your backs and receivers. Bo Suter's the slot back. Ryan Williams is the fullback. They give it to him, and there's nothing there. Tennessee stopped it in the middle. Justin Harrell, number 92, gets the tackle. A pickup of maybe a yard. It'll be third down and five. Turk McBride and Antonio Reynolds start on the ends. Justin Harrell, Matt McLaughlin in the middle of that defensive front for Tennessee. Linebackers, Ryan Carl, Marvin Mitchell, and Gerard Mayo. And the secondary, Wade Stewart and Inky Johnson. Third down and five. Crowd gets into it. Carney fakes, takes it up the middle, gets a first down, and then some as he crosses the 45. Finally stopped by Gerard Mayo and Jonathan Hefner. But he gets a Carney first down for the Falcons at their own 47. 
Just underway from Knoxville. Man in motion is Hall. Carney keeps it, crosses midfield, gets about five as Turk McBride makes the tackle for Tennessee on Carney, who picks up five. He's now carried twice for 19 yards. Yeah, this is an offense that just gives you fits. There, he's reading the tackle. The tackle comes down hard. He pulls it and just follows him up through the hole. There's no pitch man there. That's either give it to the fullback or Carney keeps it right behind him. Second down, about five and a half for the Air Force. The line of scrimmage is the Tennessee 47. Carney keeps stopped at the line of scrimmage. He might have picked up a foot. Marvin Mitchell and Gerard Mayo cave him in at the 46. It'll be third down, about four and a half yards for the Falcons coming up. That's a good job by Mayo being out there, being where he's supposed to be. His man is the quarterback in that situation. He's got to cover him up because Nicky Johnson or Hefty was coming up to take the pitch man. Mayo holds his ground, does a good job of getting Carney when he tries to cut back, makes a nice tackle. Third down and four. Big play for the Tennessee defense. The line at scrimmage, the volunteer 46-yard line. In motion is Hall. He fakes the pitch. Good block by the fullback. Pass is caught down at the Tennessee 35. The receiver is Victor Thompson, and it's an Air Force first down after an 11-yard pickup. Five. This drive started at the 28. Inside, the handoff goes to the fullback, who breaks open for first down yardage inside the Tennessee 25. That's Ryan Williams, and Ryan Carl for the Volunteers stops him. An Air Force, they picked up three, moving from their 28 to the Tennessee 24. That's where they have the football right now. Handoff, Carney fakes it, keeps it. Still on his feet. Carney first at the 10 down to the Tennessee 7. It'll be first down and goal for Air Force. Jonathan Hefney saved the touchdown. First down and goal to go. Air Force at the Tennessee 7. 65 yards, 8 plays, 4 minutes, 30 seconds, and it's not over yet. Carney. Keeps again. Carney to the five, inside the five, stopped by a host of orange shirts. Ryan Carl, the first to get to him, along with Antonio Reynolds. The way Carney's playing to this point, the Vols are probably hoping that he just gets tired because <laughs> he's carrying the ball every other time. Does a good job on the read, pulls it out, slips a little bit, bit right in the hole for a short game. Tenth play of the drive. Second down and goal from the five-yard line. Carney pitches to Hall. They string him out. Hall, touchdown, Air Force. Chad Hall, a five-yard run, and the Air Force makes it look very, very easy on their first possession of the season. That's what the Air Force, that's what that flex bone will do to you. They hit you in the middle. They hit you in the middle. The quarterback keeps it. They give it to the fullback. Then they run a guy in orbit motion and turn around and pitch it to him. When you're looking inside, he gets a little crack on the outside. Goes into the end zone untouched. Six nothing. Zach Sasser will attempt the extra point. And he made it. So it's seven nothing in favor of the Air Force. 9.32 to go in the first quarter. And there is a penalty marker on the play. Seven nothing. Air Force leads it. Lucas Taylor, Demetrius Morley, will receive the kick from Zach Sasser. Hits it high. This is Morley, two yards deep in the end zone. Morley stopped at the 10 yard line. Yeah, well, Taylor was trying to get him to stay in the end zone, and Morley should have listened to him because he caught the ball about, cut it about four yards deep, and only got the ball out to about the 12 or 13. Bo Suter with a great block ahead of Chad Hall. Nobody had a chance to even touch him getting into the end zone. No, like I said earlier, you get so used to him jamming you in the middle, jamming you in the middle, and so that's where you're looking for the football. Bam, they hit you outside. Eric Ainge opens a quarterback for Tennessee, 11 of 18, under 300 yards, four TDs and one pick. The fake, he rolls right, completes it. Pass caught. 
still on his feet for a Tennessee first down is Austin Rogers. Austin Rogers with a pass reception good for 16 yards and a Tennessee first down. Aaron Sears, David Liggett, Michael Frog, Anthony Parker, and Eric Young start on the front for the Volunteers. Arian Foster, Cody Anderson in the backfield with Ainge. Your receivers, tight end Chris Brown, Jason Swain, Robert Meacham, and Austin Rogers was also in there. Handoff straight ahead, huge hole. Foster very close to a first down for the Volunteers as he picks up at least nine. Foster with a carry and Bobby Giannini gets the tackle. Here are your starters up front for the Falcons. Noah Gargiul, the defensive end. Gilberto Perez, Grant Thomas, and Josh Clayton up front. Drew Fowler, Joey Keller, and of course the Falcon is Julian Madrid. And in the secondary, Reebok, Brad Mison, Giannini, and Chris Sutton. First down after a 10 yard pickup by Foster. Play action again. Ains going deep down the sidelines. Got Meacham. Meacham's there. Out of bounds inside the 25 for a Tennessee first down. Meacham with a great reception on an almost perfect throw from Eric Ains. Almost perfect. That was perfect, Randy. <laughs> Good play action by Ains to hold everybody in. He, he had Austin Rogers coming across the middle of the field open, but he knew what he wanted. He wanted Meacham deep. Down the right sideline, who beat that cornerback, had a step on him, beat Chris Sutton, and he lays it in there. Couldn't lay it in there any better. Meets and makes a nice catch. That coming from a former quarterback. I should have known. Yes. 44 yards on the reception from Ames to Meacham. Tennessee first down at the Falcons 17 yard line. Ames gives it to Foster. Not much there, maybe a yard. Drew Fowler made the tackle. He was the first white shirt to hit Arian Foster. Which is essentially a slash strong safety linebacker. He came from the right side. Fowler came from the left and bottled that thing up. Gain of one, second down nine. Foster in the sweep gets in trouble. Stopped for a yard loss. So Tennessee now faced with third and 11. Foster 11 after the two yard loss by Foster. Big play coming up for Tennessee. Air Force leads at 7-0. Ames dropping back over the middle. Incomplete. In and out of the hands of Robert Meacham. And it'll be fourth down and 11, and the field goal unit comes in. Not a bad throw by Ames, just straight drop back. Didn't see a lot of that last week in a, in a hook pattern past the sticks by Meacham. He threw the ball a little bit to the outside. I think if he'd have led Meacham away from that defender, it would have been an easier catch. But as it was, I still think he should have caught the football. James Wilhoyt, as you see, the SEC active scoring leader, 234 points, attempting his first field goal of the year. It's from 35 yards, and he nailed it. Tennessee stopped at the 18-yard line, but they still get three on the 35-yard field goal by James Wilhoyt, and with seven minutes exactly to be played in the first quarter, Air Force leads Tennessee seven to three. Tennessee with a trailing Air Force seven to three with exactly seven minutes to go in the first quarter. We'll see if they've made the right adjustments in just a moment. Kicking it off after he kicked a 35 yard field goal to put Tennessee on the board here in the first quarter. Seven to three Air Force. And Will Hoyt kicks it high, kicks it very deep. It's about five yards into the end zone, and that's where they will lead it. Jim Hollis with a fair catch, actually with a touchback. And Air Force first down and 10 from their 20. Yeah, here's the foul. Here's Carney doing what he does, just faking the ball and keeping it himself, putting on moves, eluding people, and getting down the field. Here, they just pitched the ball out, and they got us looking inside. Goes into the end zone untouched. First down and 10. Falcons from their own 20 to start their second possession. 6.44 to go in the first quarter. Air Force leads it 7 to 3. Carney with a keeper. He's stacked inside the 20 yard line. A loss of a yard. Rod Mayo was there to hammer him uh, with, with some help. Antonio Reynolds also there to hit him, and it's a loss of a yard. Second down. Yeah, but Matt McLaughlin just blew up 
the fullback. Carney had no choice but to keep the ball, but Mayo shoots through. He's not going to wait for Carney to make a move on him. He's not coming to get you. He did, and he got a little help from the outside from Reynolds. Loss of about a foot, they say. It's about second down and 11. Carney, two receivers right. Straight drop, penalty marker down, pass caught. Oh, my! And he is hammered by Gerard Mayo. The receiver was Ryan Williams coming out of the backfield, and Gerard Mayo just laid the wood to him at the 15. I think, I'm, I'm, I hate to say it, but I believe that's going to go against us. We might have been offsides. Yes, we were. So that play, that big hit goes for not. And there you see Carney throwing it out there. And Mayo just laid the wood, and Eric Ainge, he, he liked that. Of course, he doesn't like it when they do it to him, but in that, in that case, he loved it. But it all went for not. Air Force is set up with first and five at the 25 yard line. No, second and five. Second, I'm sorry. Second down. Went from a two yard loss to a five yard gain. Inside the handoff to Williams out near the 30. He's close to the first down. I don't think he got it. And one of the Tennessee players lost a helmet. Marvin Mitchell, Gerard Mayo make the tackle. Four yard pickup. It'll be third and short for the Falcons. Yeah, Williams is running the ball hard up through there. Did a good job of just busting that thing too, breaking a few tackles. He's not a tall guy. Goes about 5'9", but he's 215, 220 pounds, low to the ground, hard guy to tackle. Big play, third and one from the 29. Carney, pitch back. Oh! And dragging him down at the 31. Hanky Johnson made the ticks. Air Force now three out of three in third down conversions. First down and 10 from the Falcon 32 yard line. There's Inky six tackles last week against California. Plenty of time. Pass caught. First down, Air Force, the receiver. Chad Hall coming. And they're doing an excellent job of that. They've got Tennessee off balance at this point. First down and 10. The crowd trying to spur the volunteers on. They have not been able to stop Air Force yet. Williams, they got him right there. Loss of a yard. Tennessee caught up with him. Justin Harrell from his defensive tackle spot was the first man to get to him. That's a loss of a little bit. About a yard. It'll be second down and 11. Yeah, Williams takes the ball up, up tried to get up in the hole, but Harold was right there. He shed his block that time. Didn't let the guy come down and seal him inside. And meets him in the backfield. Second down, 11. Tennessee had him in the same situation a couple of plays ago. Air Force calling an audible. And now they call timeout. Timeout charge to the Air Force with 2.57 to go in the first quarter. Well, Carney got caught short of time there, and then the crowd saw that he was trying to audible. They tried to get in the game, make it a little louder, and Carney finally knew they couldn't hear him, so he had to call timeout. We'll take a timeout with him. Under three minutes to go in the first quarter. Air Force leading Tennessee 7-3. to three. Second down, 11. 7-3, to three, the Air Force Academy with the lead. Look at that rushing ball, 67 to 9. In motion, Hall. Carney keeps it, picks up a couple and not much more. Marvin Mitchell makes the tackle after about a four-yard pickup, so it will now be third and seven. See, that's a great example of what Carney gives you. Tennessee played that very well. They took the fullback away. Mitchell's there. He's there for the quarterback. He overruns. He just one step, and Carney makes him pay, cuts back in. It's not big, but it's four yards. It sets you up, you know, third and six. It keeps you on schedule. Third and six. Tennessee needs a stop here. Third and seven. Hall 
in motion. Carney back to pass. They have a man wide open at the 40, at the 30, the Tennessee 20-yard line. First down and 10 for the Falcons. Bo Suter. Game first down and 10 Air Force at the Tennessee 20. Carney calling an audible. 143. Clock is moving. That's the time. Air Force may have jumped. Tennessee's got him back at the 25. That's a loss of about five. Jonathan Hefney, the first to get to him. It's a loss on the play of at least three. And that's what you needed there. We looked like a lot of people moved in that interior line, but there's no flags on the field. Fake to the fullback. He came out, had nothing to do. I believe his pitch man went the wrong way. He was looking to pitch that football. There was nobody there except Hefney, and he took him down. Ryan Carl, oh. rather than Jonathan right. Hefney, made the tackle. Big play by Carl, who made several last week. Loss of three, second down, 13. Carney fakes. They cave in on him. He gets away, but not Mayo almost had him. Finally hit after a good gain inside the Tennessee 20. Xavier. Third down seven. Big play coming up for Tennessee. Nine plays, 64 yards. They beat up, eaten up almost six and a half minutes. Handoff, Williams, first down inside the 10 yard line. So good is this offensive front despite their lack of size. Quarter because that quarter has come to a close. Air Force leads Tennessee seven to three and the Falcons are threatening to put more on the board here at Neyland Stadium. Stay with us. We'll be back with the second quarter in just a moment. Williams straight ahead. Williams to the five. Ryan Carl hits him at the five yard line. Well, they, they give you all that wide open look and then hand it to the fullback. I mean, there's just nothing conventional about this offense to this point. Four yard gain down to the five. It'll be second down and goal for the Air Force. They lead it seven to three. Usually just started the second period of. And don't you know Eric Ames is just chomping at the bit to get his hands on the football, but he can't because Carney's got it. Carney hands to Williams again. Nothing there. They stop him. It'll be third and goal from inside the five. JT Mapu makes the tackle for the Volunteers. And this is a big, big play for the Tennessee defense. Third and five. If you're the defense that you think you are and everybody else that you've shown last week, this is a stop you make. You shut them down, make them go for three. The line of scrimmage is the four and a half yard line. Third down. I'd put Gerard Mayo on Carney, and I wouldn't let him even look at anybody else right here. Yeah, I'm right there with you, Randy. You better, you better watch number five. Carney dropping back. They're coming after him. And they're going to get him. He tries to throw the football away. And he's out of the pocket, so it's not going to be intentional grounding, but credit Tennessee's Marvin Mitchell with putting the heat on Sean Carney. Well, just when Tennessee needed to play, the senior linebacker Mitchell shoots through. Carney tries to run the bootleg. Tennessee wasn't fooled, and Mitchell shows his speed catching Carney on the outside. Almost had him for a sack, but Carney got rid of it to save a few yards. Zach Sasser will attempt the field goal, which is just a little more than an extra point. It will be a 22 yarder for Sasser. The kick is away, and it is good. So Tennessee has to feel a little better, even though they gave up points. They have to feel a little better that they didn't give up a touchdown right there when they had it first and goal at the nine. Well, they needed to stop in the worst way. 13-31 to go in the first half. Air Force leading Tennessee 10-3. Ten to three. All right. 86 yards for the Air Force. Tennessee with nine on the ground. Tennessee has actually four more yards passing. Third down conversions, that's a big key. Five out of five for the Air Force. The Volunteers 0 for 1. The time of possession, 1228 to 232. Unbelievable. 
Zach Sasser is going to kick it off. Tennessee, they're going to kick a high, high kick. It's going to be taken with a fair catch of the 25 by the Volunteers, number 28, Chris Brown. <laughs> go Carney handing off to the fullback taking it straight up the middle for some hard yards and there's Carney breaking loose to the outside and Luton Gerard Mayo getting up the field so he can do this hand his fullback up the middle again Tennessee's second offensive possession quick hitter out to the left Austin Rogers gets good yardage out to the 35 that's a pickup of about eight yards on the play on the pass completion from Eric Ames to Austin Rogers, who caught the first pass of the day. And this is this has to be Austin Rogers' first first start mm -hmm. in college. Last week they talked he wasn't even really going to be in the rotation. He ended up playing quite a bit outside of his punt return duties. He's caught two nice balls tonight. Second down one, Tennessee stacked up. They give it straight ahead, trying to play power football. Austin Rogers gets the call. Don't know if he got it. It's going to be close. He needed one yard. And he got real close to that. That's a that's a new formation by Tennessee. They had two linemen in the backfield uh, as blocking backs in that situation. Couldn't tell who they were. I believe that was uh, Richard. Somebody else in the backfield ended up handing it to the tailback. And as we see right now, it's they're bringing out the chains. To, I think they got it. See if there's any chicken left on this bone. <laughs> Whether they get it or not, there's not going to be any chicken left, I guarantee you. But they did get it. How about my eyesight? <laughs> First down, Tennessee. They picked up the yard they needed. And they're at the their own 36. Eric Ains brings his team out. Arian Foster is in a tailback. Two receivers right, one left for the Volunteers. Ains, play action, actually gives it straight ahead. That's Foster who picks up four. Out to the 40-yard line. What Tennessee needs is a long drive and a touchdown right here. They need a touchdown, period. You know, whether it's long, short, or whatnot. Last last play they lined up Anderson out wide as a wide receiver brought him back in motion to block. You see Foster there on the counter play taking it to the backside for a nice four yard gain. Second down six for Tennessee at the 40. Ains quick drop pass caught first down Chris Brown the receiver. He gets the first down crossing the 45 and goes out of bounds. Eight yard pickup. And they mark the football at the Tennessee 40, 48 yard line. Yeah, this is one of the oldest pass plays in football. Three step drop, tight end in the flat, and a slant in behind him. If the safety stays back, you hit the tight end in the flat. That's just what Eric Ames did. First down, Ames gives it to Foster. Wasn't much there, but he made a little chicken salad there because there's a two yard pickup. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Air Force did a nice job of coming up and forcing that play, uh, holding Foster to a, a relatively short game. Grant Thomas made the tackle. Two yard pickup, second down and eight right from midfield. High formation, two receivers right, one left for Ames. Second and eight. Haynes, plenty of time over the middle, caught and dropped. That's an incomplete pass inside the 35. Austin Rogers had it and then dropped it. It'll be third and long for the Volunteers at midfield. Nice pass by uh, Ainge. He had Austin Rogers running a deep square in out of the slot position. Ainge waited for him to linebackers and hit him right in stride. Just couldn't hang on. Took a good shot by. Uh, Giannini uh, as the ball got there and as a result dropped it. Ainge four out of six today as a an Air Force player I think is down. Uh, the four out of six he's completed the two that have been incomplete have been right in their hands and they dropped one by Chris Brown and then the other by Austin Rogers. Well he's been sharp to this point but the problem you got now is now 
just like the last drive, Randy, we were moving the football pretty good, and then you get a third and long, or you know, we're set at third and eight, eight and a half here. So those are not uh, ideal third down situations. We'll take a time out there attending to Noah Garjul, the 6'5 junior. Defensive end on the field. We'll take a break. 10.56 to go. Air Force with the lead. Get back to the football basics every Friday night on CSS with live high school football. Pre-game coverage begins at 7 o'clock Eastern, spotlighting top prep players and teams from all over the Southeast. Then stay tuned for the live CSS high school game of the week, followed by the CSS post game show with scores and updates from around the region only on CSS. Tennessee faced with a third down and eight and Tennessee is 0 for 1 in third down conversions. So do you think Air Force might blitz here third and long. You know I don't know they they do a lot of blitzing but in, in the middle of the field it wouldn't surprise me to sit back and see them sit back play coverage try and keep everything in front of them. It's one of those situations Tennessee only had one third and long last week and already got two. Hardesty and Anderson are the setbacks along with Ames. Ames back to throw. They're coming after him. His pass is caught at the 40. First down, Tennessee. And that's Jason Swain with a reception. On a third and eight, Sta uh, Swain steps up and catches one for 11 yards and a volunteer first down. Just a good choice by Ames. He saw the double coverage on the left side. Knew he had single on the right. Swain just runs a deep stop pattern right in front of the cornerback. Nathan Smith catches it past the sticks and keeps the ball moving. First down inside the Air Force 40. Tennessee inside the running back is Montario Hardesty, who gets good yardage. A big hole opened. He picks up seven. And just a straight handoff up the middle. Got a good block by Anthony Parker caving down the, the nose guard to open up that hole for Hardesty. First chance he's got to run the football tonight. Had 56 yards and five carries last week against California. Second down and about three after a seven yard pickup by Hardesty. The line of scrimmage is the 33 of Air Force. Ainge hands to Foster. Actually, that's Corey Anderson, the fullback, never could get going. Stopped for a yard gain, maybe. Anderson picked it up, and Tennessee again faced with a third down. Yeah, that, that appeared to just be a play to, to try and catch Air Force off guard because Anderson's not the guy that you hand the football to expecting to gain a lot of yards. No blocking out on the outside. There's nobody to account uh, for the defender, Josh uh, Raybold, and he comes up and makes a tackle. Third down and two. High formation behind Ainge. They give it straight ahead. Hardesty's got the first down. Cuts back to the right inside the 30 of 25 and out of bounds. At the 23, Montario Hardesty finally pushed out by Bobby Giannini after an eight-yard pickup and another Tennessee first down. A good run by Hardesty. Looked like he almost took himself out of the first down. He got through the line of scrimmage, got past the sticks, and all of a sudden put on the brakes, decided to take it east and west instead of north and south. Did a good job of showing some speed there, eluding the guy and getting to the sideline. Out of bounds at the 22. Tennessee with the 11th play of this drive. It's a first down for the Volunteers. Ames gives it to Hardesty. Power football to the left and nothing doing. They chase him down and drop him for no gain. John Rabel from his Falcon position in the secondary makes the tackle. Well, Raybow was out there, but Corey Anderson was too, and he just kind of cut inside the fullback's block. Hard to see. He thought uh, Anderson was going to have him. He was trying to get to the outside. Anderson misses. Raybow doesn't. Loss of about a half a yard. 23. It'll be second down 11. Three receivers wide for Tennessee. Into motion is Corey Anderson. Ames. Rolling right, throwing, caught at the 15-yard line. And doing a great job of hanging on to that football was Chris Brown. He picks up about eight. Down 
to the 15 yard line. Yeah, nice bootleg by Ains. Comes out to the right side, gets a little pressure. Chris Brown is running the drag pattern. He's covered very well, and Ains puts it right on the money. Brown takes a nice shot, as you said, but hung on for the nice first down. Or, well, I take it, not a first down, but for the good game. It'll be third down and three. The numbers for Ames. Six out of eight, and the two that he had incomplete were both dropped. Ames, quick drop. Plenty of time. Throws the pass high. Caught by Spain. A Swain spins away. Inside the 10's got the first down. Jason Swain, Tennessee at the 10 yard line. It was third and three. He picks up five and another volunteer first down. Great, great catch by Swain on the outside. And great protection by the offensive line. Danny Ainge, er, Danny Ainge, Eric Ainge is looking across the middle. Comes down to his third guy outside and is Swain and he throws it high. He does a great job of going up and rebounding that ball and taking it up past the sticks. Drew Fowler made the tackle. Ainge now has over 100 yards passing and they can get a first down without scoring. Inside the 10 goes Arian Foster, picks up about three. Garrett Reebok makes the stop. And he didn't get out of bounds, though I thought he did. The clock is moving, 6.55 to go. Yeah, it looked like they had something there. Got a good block by uh, Anthony Parker out there pulling it. The only problem was that uh, Reebok beat the block of Jason Swain on the outside. Foster back in the backfield, along with David Holbert at fullback. They give it to Al Foster straight ahead inside the five. Foster down to the four, maybe the three. We'll see. Drew Fowler made the tackle. It's going to be down for Tennessee at the four yard line. And Foster comes off the field with a little limp. Yeah, he's not walking too bad, but that's not a good sign for Tennessee. Good hole up front. Foster gets hit just a lot of uh, yard past the line of scrimmage by Fowler, but does a good job of gaining three on his own. 16th play of the drive coming up for the Volunteers. Third down. They can get a first down. Why not get a touchdown? Big Orange. Robert Meacham. Four yards from Eric Ains, and the Volunteers are an extra point away from tying the football game. Just a nice, quick, short out route to meet him on the right side. He cut his split down to give himself plenty of room. He's covered out there by Chris Sutton, their best cornerback. Didn't cover him tight enough. Let him just pretty much go wide open. That's just a nice, easy six points. Meet him with a grab. Will Hoyt will kick. Casey Woods will hold. He nails it. That's a 10-10 game. 5.47 to go in the first half. The Volunteers have finally caught the Falcons and they've tied the game at 10-10. And we'll be back to Neyland Stadium in Knoxville in just a moment. You know, it gave them a chance to, to have a good period of time to sit over there with uh, Johnny Chavis and his defensive uh, staff to go over any type of adjustments and really uh, coach him up a little bit for this drive. 16 plays, 74 yards. Air Force had the ball for 823. Tennessee's last drive over seven and a half minutes. When you think about it, we are 547 left in the first half. Each team has had the ball twice. At the one yard line, Jim Ollis straight up the middle. He is blasted down inside the 15. Goodness, Marvin Mitchell, a 14 yard return, and Mitchell and Ben Green nailed it. Well, that's. Well, here's a look at Tennessee's drive. Eric Gaines rolling right, doing a good job of catching Brown coming across the field. The nice catch by Swain out on the outside. Then comes back with an easy little three yard touchdown pass to Robert Mitchell. Well, the crowd is on its feet. First down and 10 from the 15-yard line. Carnot, 
Straight ahead, Williams first down past the 30 yard line. He hits that hole so quickly. Back to you. All right, thank you, Mike. 17 yard gain by Williams. Carney calling a changing the play at the 33. First down, hand off Williams. Actually, Carney keeps it inside the 30 yard line. Gerard Mayo hit him for a big loss, and that is a big play on first down. Yeah, that's a big play. Push him back a little bit. Same play they've been running. It, it sounds monotonous, but they faked to the fullback. They blasted him. He comes out. Mayo's got the quarterback, and he comes fast. Get, takes Carney down before he has a chance to put any type of move on. About a two-yard loss altogether. The attendance tonight, 105,466. Second down, 12. Carney, there's a draw. Williams, hit inside the 40. Didn't get the first down, but something positive put him in. Third short, an opportunity to make a first down. Third down, four. Carney, Williams, Bam. smack down at the 37. Marvin Mitchell clocked the middle up, and it's fourth down and five. Yeah, Tennessee did just what you asked for, Randy. They got the stop that they needed. Mitchell does a great job shooting the gap up the middle. Williams had been gashing them tonight. Not that time, Williams hit, uh, Mitchell hits him right in the face, and now we got our first punt of the night. Jonathan Hefney was the guy that helped out right there. In fact, he's going to be back at the, standing at the 24. Chris Carp with the first punt of the day. Hefney with the 20. Cuts back to the left. Great block. Penalty marker down. Somebody's going to clip at the 25. Well, the, the, the side judge threw that flag. They had to think about it. That's good officiating. And by the way, this is a Mountain West crew. Rich Colin, your referee, as you see him right there. And there are the other guys. So Tennessee has it first down and 10 at the 25. And Heppy does a good job of running around, making people miss. There's the block that I believe they threw the flag on. And but he, had a, yeah. he was around in front. Yeah, he was in good, good shape. Draw play, Hardesty. Pretty good yardage, five, maybe six yards. Josh Clayton makes the tackle on Hardesty after a pickup of about four. Well, the secondary for Air Force is really coming up fast when, when uh, Tennessee's running back cut that thing to the outside. That time, cornerback came up. Hardesty did a good job eluding him. Pass caught, first down. Caught by Austin Rogers out near the 35. That's about a 38 yard line. Drew Fowler makes the tackle, but not before the reception to Rogers gives Tennessee a first down. Under two minutes to go now in the first half. And Tennessee's in a little bit of a hurry up mode here. They're getting right back on the football. Eric Gaines is relaying the play. Quick drop. Pass caught. Hardesty. Little shake and bake. Hardesty near midfield he's going to be short of the first down but he's going to pick up nine yards <laughs> Drew Fowler makes the tackle for the Falcons it'll be second down and one and Tennessee's going to call timeout 132 to go in the first half timeout Tennessee Eric Eric was really fortunate on that play he was uh, coming back, looking down the field, and decided to come out to Hardesty. The linebacker is standing right there, and he throws it almost in his helmet. And I think it took him by surprise because it just went right over the top of his helmet. Hardesty makes the catch and takes it up the field. That could have gone the other way oh, very yeah. easily. Tennessee calls timeout after the nine-yard pickup by Hardesty. It'll be 132 to go. Let's go down to Mike Stoll on the sideline. Mike? Hey, Randy, uh, on the sidelines, we saw the defense early on. Ryan Carl got up and said, hey, guys, we're going to look at this wishbone a lot more. We're going to adjust to it better. We're going to get a feel for the handoffs. We're going to get a feel for the fakes. And once we do, we're going to start stopping that series. They start to shorten things up, getting a better feel. But I tell you what, Randy, the offensive line is picking things up, and there's a really positive mood right now. They know they're in for a 60-minute battle. But Randy, they are really ready to play this game. 
One thirty two left plenty of time with the football lying just shy of midfield it'll be second down and one. Well, I don't think you're going to see Ains go deep down the field but you'd see him throw a lot of short stuff. Or hand the ball off to Hardesty. Hardesty almost broke that one. He does get a first down. It was second and one. He picks up about seven. Drew Fowler knocks him out of bounds. That stops the clock with 124 to be played in the first half. Ten yard pickup by Montario Hardesty. Well, Sears did a good job of sealing off the left side of the line, giving Hardesty a chance to turn that corner and get up for the first down. Haynes, first down, back to throw. Caught at the 30. First down, Volunteers. Ains is right on the money. Yeah, Robert that, Meacham made the catch. That, that's a rifle shot, too. I mean, that's a big-time throw. Hits his fifth step. Meacham turns in. He hits it right in the face with the football, just like he drew it up. Clock moving, 1-11 to go. Tennessee with a first down inside the 30. Ains back to throw. Pass caught. Inside the 10. First down, Tennessee. Robert Meacham again to the grab. And the Volunteers, with under a minute to go, are threatening to take the lead. Yeah, Eric's cooking a little bit now. He wanted to come to the right side with that ball. Came off to secondary receiver, which was the crossing pattern. Hit him right in stride. Under a minute to go. 20 yard pickup on the reception from Ainge to Meacham. First down, goal. Straight ahead. To the five goes Hardesty. Hardesty and Foster are the only running backs we've seen, but Tennessee really hasn't had that many opportunities today. This is their third possession of the game, and Air Force has had three. And we're almost through the first half. Well, we need to call Tennessee needs to call timeout. Well, somebody called timeout. They did. The clock was moving. Air Force called the time. It's at the five. There's Robert Meacham. Four catches, 82 yards. He's averaging over 20 yards. He's caught a touchdown. Yeah, he's picking up right where he left off last week. Caught 180, I believe it was 882 yards worth of passes last week with five catches. His average is obviously down from that, but 20.5 20 is nothing to sneeze at. Tennessee uh, got a break right there with Air Force calling timeout. They look like, for the first time this season, a little discombobulated, like they didn't know whether they wanted to call timeout or what they wanted to call. They ended up wasting about 15 seconds there. Tennessee still has two timeouts left. Air Force has one after they called that one. So the volunteers, you can do a lot with 33 seconds and two timeouts. Well, see, that's why that's why I couldn't understand why after that last play they didn't immediately call timeout since they had the one left that they needed to keep to kick the field goal if they had to. Tennessee with the football. The line of scrimmage is the five yard line. It's second down and goal. Tennessee would love to punch one in here and take the lead at halftime. You know, it's been a great football game. Yeah, it really has. A lot of offense, that's yeah. for sure. You know, it's uh, some good hitting, but uh, a lot of really good. Sustained drives, that type of thing, and good, good passing on both sides. And a lot of good running by Air Force. Second and goal. Three receivers left, one set back with Ainge. Ainge back to throw. Throws it into the end zone. Touchdown, Big Orange! Jason Swain from Eric Ainge for five yards, and the Volunteers have taken the first lead of the game for them. It's 16 to 10. Nice throw by Ains. Nice concept by Tennessee. They had three guys on that side. Two went to the inside. The outside guy ran a little stop in a short, really short square in. The quarterback, you can't get caught on his outside shoulder like that. You have to play him from the inside. You play on the outside, it's going to be a sure touchdown. Easy throw by Ains. Will Hoyt will try to make it 17 to 10, and he does. 28 seconds to go in the first half. Tennessee has its first lead of the game, 17 to 10, over the Air Force. And with 28 seconds, and one thing, one thing you can say about a wishbone team, if you can get a lead of double digits on them, it's hard to come back 
with the uh, wishbone offense because it takes so long and they use so much time. It's yeah. not a comeback offense. It's not a comeback offense. Now this, their their offense is not exactly a wishbone. You know, they call it the flex bone where they can throw more out of it, but right. they don't have a sophisticated passing game. You're right. So they have to stay in the game or stay close or be ahead. Coach David Cutcliffe, who uh, I would say when you look at Cutcliffe and John Chavis, there are no two finer assistant coaches in college football than those two. No, they're, they're great guys. Uh, what Chief has done here speaks for itself. He always puts good defenses on the field. And David Cutcliffe had great success here and then went on to Ole Miss and had success there and has come back and has rejuvenated this offense and got it looking like they used to look like. Will Hoyt will kick it. Hollison tie Pappett number 19 back deep to receive it for the Falcons with 28 seconds to go. And he hits it almost through the uprights. First down and 10 volunteers. Well watches out Air Force takes over at their own 20 with 23 seconds to go. Eight plays 75 yards 208. Let's look at the touchdown from Ames to Swain. Little shotgun, short square into Swain. He's wide open. Those are easy completions and fun touchdowns. Well, Tennessee has looked awfully sharp offensively. Clock is moving, and I would assume Air Force is just going to let it run. Well, we haven't talked about this, but uh, you know, we get talking, we get caught up talking about quarterbacks and receivers. Protection has been tremendous. Ainge has had a lot of time to, to go off his first guy to the second guy to the third guy and complete a lot of those footballs. Just as he did last week. Well, Air Force runs out the clock. And as we go to the locker rooms at halftime, Tennessee has come back from a early deficit to take a 17 to 10 lead over the Air Force Academy here at halftime at Neyland Stadium. 106,000 fans on hand happy with the first half but might be a little concerned but keep in mind Tennessee has the football to start the second half. We're at halftime volunteers lead at 17 to 10 we'll be back to chat Bruce Pearl right after this. Back. Tennessee leads at 17 to 10 over the Air Force Academy Pat and how important would it be for Tennessee to take the ball the second half score put them up two touchdowns with the Air Force. Well just from what you were just talking about before they run the flex bone or wishbone that is not a comeback offense you get two to three touchdowns up it takes them out of what they want to do and that's run the football. 17 to 10 your score here at halftime. We'll talk a little more football a little bit later on in the broadcast. But right now let's talk a little basketball. Coach Bruce Pearl has put out a DVD call. Turn up the heat. Here's this clip. Here's Brewer. Working to get the ball in bounds. Still works. And throws the pass. Almost intercepted. It is intercepted. Bradshaw lays it up and in. Bradshaw steals the ball on the inbounds at the top of the key. Spins it in Tennessee. Leads it 74-72. Major Wingate pressed up on the ball. All the guys matched up with their guys. And then he threw the ball to Dane Bradshaw. And obviously the rest is history. And Bob, your call of that steal and that basket. Tennessee is going to win the SEC Eastern Division Championship. The Gators will bring it in. Tennessee won't guard them. They'll let them shoot. Humphrey bombs away from midcourt. No good. The buzzer barks. Tennessee wins its 20th game of the season. But more importantly, the Volunteers have won the SEC Eastern Division Championship. You are the most intense team out there. Ball Network Home Entertainment proudly presents Tennessee Basketball. Turn up the heat on DVD. Go, 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 go. The video story of Bruce Pearl and the 2006 Tennessee Basketball Balls. SEC Eastern Division champs. You see how crazy I get? Tennessee Basketball 2006. Turn up the heat on DVD with tons of bonus features presented by the natural gas utilities and pipeline companies of Tennessee. Look for it at participating JCPenney stores across Tennessee or online at ballnetwork.tv. And Coach Bruce Pearl is with us here at halftime. Give me about 10 copies of that DVD. I'm ready to play. Randy, that's uh, it's an amazing videotape. I've, I've been part of some special seasons before, but I don't know if I've ever seen anybody able to recapture what happened last year like the folks that put that thing together was awesome. Oh, they do a super job. They have been for so many years. Great football game. We were talking about 
Well, you know, offensively, Air Force can't stop us. I just love our patience and our poise and our execution. The defense, I was talking to Phillip, talking to Chief a little bit beforehand. Our defense usually dictates to, to its opponent. You can't dictate to the bone or the options. You've got to react and be patient and disciplined. It looks like we got it figured out. I thought this guy was a basketball coach. I mean, he <laughs> he could be out there coaching tonight. Well, he's a coach, that. right? Right. So, right. And, and, you, and you said back during the Florida game at home, Coach Fulmer was sitting behind you, and yep. you got so much encouragement from having him sit there. I think I got encouragement. I got support. But I got I got. He looked at me on two or three occasions and said, you're all right, stay cool, calm down. And he didn't say a word, but that's what his expression was. And it meant so much to have him back there supporting me. You know, we had lost two in a row going to that game and Florida was undefeated. And uh, so it was a pretty, a pretty big win for us as it, as it relates to trying to win the SEC East. Now you got to go do it again, though. Right. That, that, I mean, that's the challenge. I mean, you have a great season last year, exceed expectations. Right. And now those expectations are there, and, and you've got to go do it again. Right. You know, keep the same fans, support the same excitement. Well, Pat, we can do it because of the way we're going to play and the fact that we're going to have six guys playing in their first college basketball game. And we're going to be brand new. Uh, the style will stay the same. I think we can do better at the end of the season this coming year. That would be my goal. I don't know if we can do as well in the regular season. I mean, we only lost a few games in the SEC, and Florida's getting everybody back from a national championship team. I don't know how realistic it is for us to win the regular season. But can we go farther in the tournament? I think we can, and that's what I'm going to point for. Now you, you mentioned your young team. You lost CJ. You lost Major Wingate, unfortunately. He was dismissed right. from the team. And you don't have that 6'10 post player. How are you going to find somebody to play that? You got any eligibility? No, I'm not 6'10". I mean, we're going to have tryouts on campus. I don't know if there's anybody at 6'10 running around on campus. You know, I was looking forward to this season from a standpoint. Well, I think this was the year we were building a little bit towards. It's, uh, we were preseason ranked in the top 25 because we had a little bit more traditional size. We don't now. I think as a result, we're going to look a lot like we looked like last year. Very up-tempo. Have to extend our defense. We're going to be, still be challenged in the half court defensively and with our rebounding because we'll be smaller once again almost every single night. How big was it get, to get Raymar Smith in school? Oh, get Ramar was huge. And Ramar, you know, replacing T.J. Watson, the quarterback, is, is very, very difficult. But at least we've got, we got Jordan Howell returning, and we've got two or three freshmen, including Ramar, who can play the position. The difference between Jordan and Ramar is Jordan, Ramar physically might have be able to guard the great point guards in our league, like Senyata Gaines or Steele or you know some of the other guys that he's going to have to go up against. What about fan favorite and girl favorite Dane Bradshaw? Where's, where's he fit in with this team this year? Hey, he'll, he'll be out there. I tell people, marry him or hire him. One or the other. This is the most amazing, one of the most amazing kids I've ever coached. Great student, great person, God is in his life. Uh, don't call him an overachiever because he says, look, I'm not an overachiever if I'm able to achieve to the level I'm capable of. That's not overachieving. That's just, and, and so Bradshaw will be out there. Again, he'll probably wind up playing closer to the basket, giving away a lot of size, but broke that wrist. He's actually shooting the ball better. And our offense, yeah, because he doesn't get any wobble to it. It just kind of goes like this. If he shoots the ball better, it's going to make our offense better. Well, you can break everybody's wrist if that, that turns out to be right. That turns out to be the case for sure, Randy. All right. Good luck to you. I know you're going to have a great season. I'm excited sure. about last year and looking really forward to this year. Well, the key is we'll do our job as coaches. The players will continue to do them more than their job. The biggest story last year in college basketball might have been the support that we received. Number five in attendance, the number one increase in attendance in the history of the country. We keep this going. Tennessee basketball will be here to stay. And 2-0 and against the national champions. Amen. Your lips to God's ears. <laughs> All right. Thanks to Coach Bruce Pearl for stopping by and visiting with us here at halftime. Let's go down on the field where the Tennessee pride of the Southland marching band is performing.
17 to 10 here at halftime. Randy Smith and Pat Ryan with you, along with Mike Stoll on the sideline. As let's take a look at some of the highlights of the first half. There's Smokey. Smokey number nine. Beautiful animal. This is Smokey's first year. Here are your halftime stats, rushing yards. Falcons with a bit of an edge, but Tennessee with a huge edge in passing and a slight edge in total yards. 13 first downs for the Volunteers, who are also four out of five in third down conversions. And the game, believe it or not, has only one penalty. It's against Tennessee for five yards. Well, here you got John Carney keeping the football, dodging, juking, and diving, taking it up the middle of the field. Hard guy to tackle. Then he hits him outside with Chad Hall taking it around left end for Air Force's first touchdown. Here's Eric Ainge rolling on the bootleg, hitting Brown across the field. Coming back to Swain, makes a high circus catch, takes it up for a big first down that keeps that ball moving that leads to this short pass to Beecham to extend the score. Comes across the field again on a two-minute drill, hits Swain, and then comes back to Swain in the end zone for six points. Well, Coach Philip Fulmer talking with Mike Stoll looked to be a little edgy. Well, this this flex bone, you know, he said it. He was nervous. John Chavis alluded to it. They were facing this offense. It's a hard offense to play. Yeah, he said it was almost like facing a second season opener. Well, it, <clears throat> the tough thing is you just never see an offense like this, so it's hard to prepare for. That's all there is to it. Let's go down one more time before we start the second half to Mike Stoll. Mike. Hey, Randy, just a quick update on Arian Foster. Looks like he might have just sprained his ankle a little bit. Nothing real serious. They're not sure if he's going to be back in the game, but they don't, the doctor didn't sound like it was really anything serious. All right. Montario Hardesty will get the start at tailback. Tennessee gets the ball first to start the second half as they did win the toss and deferred to this half. This first possession is very, very important. Lucas Taylor, Demetrius Morley back deep to receive for Tennessee. Zach Sasser is going to kick it off for Air Force. And this one's going to bounce into the hands. Oh my goodness. They call it, they said a knee hit at the one yard line. Demetrius Morley took the kick. A knee hit the ground. I thought that's, but I didn't think they were going to call it, but they did. Yeah, he went down to get this ball bouncing in front, but he's got two knees on the ground. I mean, he's clearly down. But kickoffs have, have not been his best plays of the night. Took one out early in the game that he should have uh, just kept in the end zone that time. Went down to the ground to try and bring it out. Uh, not a good move by Morley. So Tennessee starts from its own one yard line. Hardesty is in a tailback behind him. Not the best field position. Straight ahead, a little running room. Hardesty gets out to the four. As Tennessee runs straight ahead at the Air Force, picks up three. So it'll be second down and seven. But the main thing you got to think of here, you'd like to punch it out from your own end zone, but the main thing is ball security. Don't give Air Force anything cheap or anything easy. Second down, seven. High formation, Ains, quick drop, throws it, caught. Out near the first down marker, he's probably going to be short. Meacham, the receiver, shoved out of bounds by a couple of white shirts. It's going to be interesting to see where they mark the football. Yeah, usually when your quarterback double clutches like this, look at a receiver, that, that's just not a good sign. Still had a chance to get the ball out to beat him right in front of the marker. Dangerous throw, but sets Tennessee up for third and short. Third down, one. Air Force stacking everybody up front. They give it inside. Hardest first down out to the 14. And the Volunteers move the football straight up the middle. Three yard pickup. John Raybald makes the tackle. Yeah, handed off deep in the backfield, deep in the eye. Takes it straight over the left side. Got a good block over there on the left side by Cottom to spring him through for a few yards that he needed. 
They marked him down at the 13. It's still, it is still a first down for the Volunteers. One receiver right, one left. Swain and Meacham. High formation behind Ainge, who dropped the football. And I believe Tennessee fell on it. One of the linemen fell on it. A bobble just offensive set we've seen for the Volunteers. Second down and 10. Ainge, play action, rolling right, dumps it off to Corey Anderson, who did a good job of crossing the 15. Third down. About six and a half for the Volunteers. Plenty of time. Ainge over the middle. Austin Rogers first down out past the 25 yard line. Ainge just picking them apart. Drew Fowler makes the tackle after an eight yard pickup on a third and six. And good protection on this. They brought the stunt from the right side. Anderson picks it up. And Austin Rogers does a good job of setting them down in the hole between the linebackers. Ain't Simon hit him with it quick. Rogers still in the game. He's in the slot right. Ainge. Oh, nice job by Hardiston spinning away. Hardiston got a block, crosses the 30, gets good yardage, but almost broke that one. Five yard pickup. Seems like he actually picked up about 15, but only got five. Uh, you know, he put on enough moves to last a ball game right there. <laughs> Made a nice spin move, got through the then came to the outside and was juking and jiving all over the place and essentially tackled himself out here. Put on too many moves and just couldn't keep his balance. Gain of five out to the 31, second down and five. Ames to Hardest. Cuts back up the middle, fell down again after he picked up maybe two. The offensive line Good job of moving the pile. Gave Hardesty a chance to get up in that hole and cut back. He just tripped up on one of his offensive linemen. He would have had four or five more. Third down and three. Line of scrimmage is the Tennessee 33 yard line. Hardesty actually tripped over the foot of one of his linemen. Tennessee six out of seven on third down conversions. Chris Brown jumped off sides and still Air Force knows pretty much you have to drop back and put it down. The Another big third down play for Tennessee. Third down and eight from the 27. Ames, good protection. Deep pass. Caught. Swain spins. First down. Swain spins again inside Air Force territory. First down and 10, Tennessee. Tennessee did a great job of picking up the blitz again. Gave Ains a lot of time to look down the field. Swain beats double coverage on the outside, comes inside the strong safety, then breaks it back outside down the field for a huge first down. 24-yard pickup on the pass play. Tennessee with a first down. And keep in mind, this drive started at the Volunteer 1. Ainge, play action, good protection, going for the home run. He's got a man. It's caught inside the 10. Lucas Taylor, first down, and goal to go for the Volunteers. That's a really good catch by Taylor because he wasn't, the coverage wasn't that bad. Sutton was there. He crossed Ainge up a little bit. He cut back to the inside, and Ainge had to wait to see him put on his move. He laid it up a little short. You know, Sutton. It's just a little late getting there, and he knows it, too. And here's the reaction from Ames. You know, you, you can tell. You, know, you look at Ames. He hits a 40-yard pass. You know, it's ho-hum. You yeah. know, it's getting to be old hat now. He's completed 14 passes in a row. First down and goal. The tailback. Hardesty. Touchdown, Big Orange. A three yard run for Montario Hardesty and Tennessee leads at 23 to 10. And they went 99 to do it. That was one huge drive. Puts him up two scores on an Air Force team that's good, likes to run the football. There, Hardesty takes the ball off the left side, gets great push by Sears and Ligon over there, and just powers his way in. The extra point by Will Hoyt. 
Tennessee leads it 23 to 10. They lead it 24 to 10 with 9.14 to go in the third quarter. And Montario Hardesty just proved power football might work a little better than the shake and bake. Timeout, 9.14 to go. Tennessee with the lead. If Tennessee leading at 24 to 10 after the three yard touchdown run by Montario Hardesty puts him up by two possessions. And Will Hoyt, who put his last one into the end zone almost through the uprights kicks off again hits it well into the end zone nine yards deep. There is a penalty marker on the field of play on the Tennessee side of the field. Rod dropped between the 40 and the 45. That's normally offsides on the kicking team. Yes, it is. The Air Force is going to make him do it again, it looks like. The drive that started on the one yard Offside line. On the kicking team, be a five yard penalty after the touchback. The ball will be at the 25 yard line. So they're going to take it at the 25. Now here you go. Hardesty putting on 50,000 moves, tackles himself, <laughs> aims deep down the field to Lucas Taylor, who makes a nice catch at the four yard line, which sets up this. Hardesty off left tackle, powers his way through. For a touchdown that puts about two scores. Hardesty's three yard run, 11 plays, 99 yards. The pitch. Running room outside for Chad Hall. First down past the 40. He picks up about 16 on the play. Down field goal and one punt. 21 yard gain. But it's still a first down at the Air Force 46. That traffic is usually longer. Yes. For half a foot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. First down, Air Force, Sean Carney. Inside handoff, keeps it himself. Oh, he was horse collared after about a three yard pickup by Matt McLaughlin from his defensive tackle position. Hey, he got ripped about the line of scrimmage, but being the strong kid he is, he, he doesn't quit. He comes down the line and just gets hammered right there, spins around. Gets about two or three more yards, sets him up in a second and five situation. You would think after a hit like that, it would be second and long at second and five. He gets five yards. Unbelievable young man. Quarterback draw. Hole opens. First down. Inside the Tennessee 45. Just can't find him. At the Tennessee 43, it's a first down. Carney inside handoff Williams first down to the Tennessee 30 Ryan Williams. Here comes the Air Force Academy. They're not going to quit 56 yards on the ground and nine carries for Williams who gets it again. First down Williams, all the way to the 10 to the five to the three first down and goal to go for the Falcons. Antoine Stewart and Inky Johnson made the tackle and coach Chavis says who can I get to stop this guy. Well, it's just a, a simple spin out handoff back and no option to this play. It's just a straight fullback play with a guy in motion to get the linebacker out of there, moving outside, hand it to the fullback, and he blows it straight up the middle. First down goal to go from the Tennessee three yard line. Carney, Williams stopped at the one. Ryan Carl was there. Along with Jonathan Hefney and Marvin Mitchell. Yeah, they tried to run Williams straight up the middle to try and get the touchdown, but Mitchell was there, like you said, with Carl. Made a good hit, stood him up, drove him back. Inside the one, second down and goal. Carney keeps it himself. I 
don't know. No signal yet. Tennessee comes out with a football. They're going to race the other way. No whistle. No whistle. All the way for a touchdown. Did he score? He scored. Touchdown, Big Orange. Well, I think they're caught. Now they're down here saying that Air Force scored. Oh, my. We got two touchdowns, one on each end of the field. Which Ball one has been? Which one counts? Oh, <laughs> touchdown, Air Force. It appeared to me, it appeared to, it appeared to me that Carney got in on the sneak on second ever. I but never saw a signal until Tennessee there, got there, the ball out. There was no signal. It appeared that he got in, but there was no signal. Next thing you know, Hefty's running the other way with the football. Well, Coach Fulmer's out on the field. He's going to demand. Let's take a look. Tennessee will challenge the call. Well, he's not in there. He's in there. Yep. That's the correct call. But you know, they didn't call that. Nope. And there was no whistle. No, they did. Uh, was it? And how can, I don't know how you could miss that. Uh, this guy over here should be I able should, to clearly yeah. see that. Yeah. And, and watch, he, he still hasn't called it. There's no question he got in the end zone, but there was no whistle and there was Unless there's a whistle. Yeah, he's in. There's a football. It clearly crosses the plane. So, I mean, that's a touchdown. But as you said, Rand, there was no call from me. really tell you it is a touchdown. But there was no signal and no whistle. I, I have to agree with you. I can't see them overturning this touchdown. I've seen crazier things, but that was pretty definitive. After the video review, the call on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Which one? Yeah. Tennessee will be charged with a timeout, and they'll lose the challenge for the rest of the game. Please reset the clock to 6:14. Poor officiating, and, and you know, yes. and I, you know, and I never, very seldom ever, can criticize officials. The extra point is good, but it was poor simply because. It obviously was a touchdown, but there was no call. Exactly. And no whistle. And when you don't have a whistle, you play until you hear a whistle. That's what your coach to do. That's right. I thought what was strange was they let the play go on and everybody's running down the field and the, the rest of the officials are down here having a little conference and they still yeah. hadn't blown a whistle. Timeout, 6.14 to go. We've got a dandy one here at Neyland Stadium. Tennessee leads Air Force by seven. Here's the kick. Sasser, kick, fumble, picked up, finally knocked out of bounds by Air Force. And Tennessee gets a lucky bounce right there. Zach Sasser has really bothered the volunteers with kicking off because he got Demetrius Morley down at the one yard line on his knee and that could have been really disastrous right there because Tennessee's receiver could not handle the football. Now Austin Rogers tried to run up and get that football. They're pooching it short trying to get you to fair catch that ball. Tried to catch it on the run and didn't quite make it and almost had an awful mistake there. Hardesty is still in a tailback. He's the only setback. Two left, one right for Eric Ames. First down, Tennessee at the 27. Quick drop, look in, Meacham. First down, Meacham at the 40. To the 45, still on his feet. There's a big scrum, they call him down. And the scrum is not over. 18 yards on the pickup, Ains to Meacham. These officials are gonna have to learn when to blow the whistle. That'll alleviate a lot of that mess right there. Yeah. I don't believe they've learned it. First down. Line of scrimmage is the Tennessee 46. Mm -hmm. 
Five twenty six to go in the third a lot of time left Tennessee there's the reverse fake reverse Hardesty good yardage straight ahead Aaron Kirchhoff made the tackle on Hardesty but not before he picks up eight yards and he's into Air Force territory at the Air Force 46. Well that's some offenses like to do that they like to give it to that tailback and fake that reverse and the coaches upstairs will be looking to see where the people on Air Force were on that particular look and particular play if they all suck down into the middle you can expect to see the reverse coming sooner or later. Second down two. Ains Hardesty spinning away spinning away still fighting to get back to the line of scrimmage and actually may have gained a yard. He's going to be short of the first down. Aaron Kershaw made the tackle. Let's go down again to Mike Stoll on the sideline. And Randy on the, on the moon on the sidelines fine. You know they know they're in for a battle right now. The offense feels good about what they can get do defensively. They're missing some tackles and they're over pursuing right now and you could tell tell Ryan Carl really he's getting frustrated he's saying guys let's just stay on our assignments let's wrap up and let's bring them down and they're just getting frustrated by that misdirection right now Tennessee player is turns with new hosts a new attitude don't miss all the engaging discussions player interviews and live viewer calls you want to know the pulse of college football this season tune in every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern only on CSS Tennessee has it third and about one. This this is this is a situation on third and one. If Tennessee happens not to make it, you're going to hear everybody in this stadium urging Philip Fulmer to oh, go yeah. for it on fourth oh, yeah. down. Ainge, third and one. Hardesty hit at the line. Leans forward. I'm not sure. He may be short by about a foot. Yeah, I believe he's short by about a foot. You're right. He got a better spot on the other side of the field than he got to the near side. Both both spots are short. In fact, he's a good two feet short. Fourth down at the Air Force 45. They're going to go for it. I don't think there's any doubt right here. And if you're scared, say scared. Yeah. yeah. My dad always said, if you're scared, get a bulldog. There you go. Fourth and a foot. Ains got the first down. He just powered forward. And they mark his forward progress where it needs to be. We'll watch as they unstack, but I will be very surprised if he didn't get it. Well, he, he got a good spot on this side, and that's the guy they gave the football to, so he should have the first down. First down, Tennessee. Yeah, he got it. Yeah. Got a good Parker did a good job right there of coming off the football and giving Ainge room to squeeze up in through there. Josh McNeil in at center, the talented freshman, 6'4, 290. Tennessee trying to build some depth and rest some people here, but boy, what a football game. Yeah, they like McNeil. It was real close between him and Frog. He and Frog, who was going to start, so they like them both. Ain fakes the draw. Gets it away. Finally throws it away. Smart play by Ains. They had him covered. Corey Anderson was the intended receiver, but it went way over his head. And Sutton was defended. I think Fisher DeBerry was the intended receiver there. <laughs> yeah. Ains got, got caught up back there. If he if he could have Got away from that one guy and looked downfield. Meacham had slipped everybody and he was wide open down about the 10 yard line. But Eric just didn't have time to aim or get the ball to him. That was that broke a string of 15 straight completions that Ames had uh, made. Them. Second down and 10 from the 44. Again, play action. Ames got a man there. First down. That's Jason Swain as he's inside the 35 and has a first down and a penalty marker thrown. And it's maybe against Tennessee. There's going to be a personal foul against somebody. It looked like a face mask originally. Uh, I didn't see what happened after the scrum. I'm going to find out real quick. Dead ball. Personal foul. Number 52 on the defense. Austin yards. Randall. Of Air Force First hit down. with a personal foul, and that's got to kill you if you're an Air Force fan right now because 
They picked up 13 on the pass play. Well, Ainge does a great job. I tell you, that is a big time throw there. He's on this hash mark. Play action runs a deep comeback on the other sideline. That's about a 40 yard throw. You got to have a lot of arm to make that throw. And he did not only got it there, he threw it on time. Tennessee first down. They give it to Hardest. Big hole around the left side. He's inside the 10. Very close to a first down. He's going to be short. Aaron Kirchhoff finally stopped him. He picked up at least eight on the blood. Hardest, yeah, I've, I've never really seen this guy run before. He is full of moves. I mean, I, I, I think if he was running straight down the field, he'd put on three or four moves just, just <laughs> for the heck of it. You can't find this guy. I mean, he's putting on move after move and, and making yards while he's doing it. Second down and two, Tennessee at the eight yard line. They have to get to the six for a first down. High formation, two receivers right, one left. Give it to Hardest. Nothing there. Stopped at the line of scrimmage by Joey Keller. Up from his linebacker spot. It'll be third and two. Tenth play of the drive coming up for Tennessee. Tennessee's had some long drives. I mean, it's, uh, they've put it together a lot of a lot of long play drives. That's what you look for in an offense. There, Keller came, scraped off the backside, cut hard before he could get back to the line of scrimmage. Hardesty, 17 carries, 69 yards, one touchdown today for Tennessee. Third and two. Hardesty cuts back inside to the five. If he holds onto the football, he's got a three-yard gain and a first down. Goal to go, Tennessee at the five yard line. That's just offensive push, offensive lineman push on that particular play. Hard to see, it didn't look like there was much, but those guys just stayed on their block, got the push. Anderson got a good block, and Hardesty kept going north and south, got past the line. Tennessee with Sears, Ligon, Frog, or rather McNeil, Parker, and Eric Young. First down and goal. Hardesty again. To the four, they push him back. A gain of a yard. Drew Fowler from his linebacker spot. Actually, they say no gain. It'll be second and goal from the five. Well, Fowler's one of the few returning stars in that linebacker crew, and, and uh, he's made a lot of plays tonight. He, sh he shows why he made 77 tackles last year. He's, he's around the football a lot. And wherever hardest he went that time, he put on a move here, went that way, he was covered, went the other way, he was covered, power brought him down. Ten seconds to go. Ainge is going to let the ball and the quarter run out right here. And Tennessee will have it when we start the fourth quarter. Second down and goal from the five. We've completed three out of four tonight at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. Tennessee leading the Air Force 24 to 17. And the Volunteers threatening second down and goal from the Falcon five yard line. Tennessee leading at 24 17. We'll be back with the fourth quarter right after this. For every Tennessee State Park, there's a. He has not punted in the game, and Air Force has punted once. Yeah, Angels line 20 to 23. That's, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Still a lot of work to go here. I'd like to see him go 21 and 24 for three touchdowns right here. Second and goal from the five. Ames changing the play. Three step drop, fade. Touchdown! Big orange! Robert Meacham, five yards from Eric Ames, and the Volunteers extend their lead to 30 to 17. Ainge checked off to that play. Don't know what he had called, but you could see him talking to his receivers, his linemen, changing the play. Came over on the left side. He's going to take that big, tall receiver on the shorter cornerback. Just a simple fade pattern. Beecham just goes up over the corner. Chris Sutton, second time he's got beat for touchdowns tonight. It makes an easy catch. Will Hoyt will try to make it 31 to 17. On the first play of the fourth quarter. And it's perfect. Tennessee 31. 
Air Force 17. Tennessee has had five possessions. They've had five scores, four touchdowns, and one field goal. And we'll be back with more from Neyland Stadium in Knoxville as the Volunteers lead it 31 to 17. Remember. Jim Ollis and Ty Pappett will receive. Ramon Foster is through for the night with an ankle. So he's the. And three yards deep in the end zone comes Ollis. Straight up the middle. Tennessee hammers him as he crosses the 15. Not a good decision. 16 yard return, but that ball was about four or five yards deep in the end zone. Antonio Gaines makes the tackle for the Volunteers. So now, as let's take a look one more time and see if his feet were down. That might have been what he was talking about. He got one in. There's one. Yeah, first foot came down before the other one would have gone out of bounds. So that is a, right there, that's a touchdown. The white line would be out if he stepped on it, but he's first, you only have to have one foot down in college football, and that one foot was in before he stepped out. Scores with a quarter to go. Coming back out, running the football. There's the handoff. Williams. Carney with a keeper. Nothing there. Tennessee stuffed it. Now you know what the defense is going through. Yeah, I couldn't find I thought Williams had the ball. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to find that football. That's a really good fake. Here's a look at your stats big edge for Air Force and rushing huge edge for Tennessee and passing and it's third and two <laughs> big play right here if the volunteers can hold it there's the pitch to Hall Hall gets the first down, crosses the 30. Robert will be a second down as the football crosses the 35 and they mark it at the 36. You know, it, it appears to me that Air Force assumes that they're going to drive the football down and get another touchdown. And then they're just going to count on stopping Tennessee in their next drive. And I think that's assuming a lot. Yeah. They just keep running the football. This guy's going to take a long time. And they may run out. Here's Carney. Pitches. Oh. Hall to the 40. Stays inbounds. Gets the first down. Picks up about six. Clock moving. 12 10 to go. Tennessee with a 14 point lead. Two possessions. Slot back to the left. And penalty markers go down. Illegal procedure, I think, against the Air Force. Tennessee almost jumped, but Dead they ball. did not. Ball start. Number 64 on the offense. Five yard penalty. The down is still one. Another injury report. Let's check in again with Mike Slines. He's, he's in a lot of pain. They're trying to ice his elbow. They're thinking about a brace, but right now he, he is not able to get in there. And that depth is a big concern for Tennessee in that defensive front. Somebody's going to have to step up and make a play, Randy. Right here would be a good time. First down, 15. Williams, nothing there. Tennessee stepped up, gave him a yard, maybe. JT Mapu makes the tackle, among others. Marvin Mitchell was in there also for Tennessee. It'll be second down and 14. Well, what that what that injury has caused, Xavier Mitchell's had to drop down and play tackle now because he's so thin at that position. I mean, he only goes, you know, 6'2", 260. Right. Second down, 14. Carney back to throw. They got him covered. They got him back at the 27-yard line. Ryan Carl, the first to get him. And also back there, Xavier Mitchell, the guy you were talking about. Well, that weight doesn't help you in the run game, but it sure helps you on your pass rush. Ryan Carl, Carl causes this, gets to him first. Mitchell comes off and cleans it up. And this is not Air Force's cup of tea, third and nope. 20. 
And down two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Carney trying to change the call. Tennessee's getting louder and louder. Carney pitches. They pitch back. They got some yardage, but they're not going to get the first down. They got back to the original line of scrimmage. Chad Hall picked up about seven, maybe eight yards. Gerard Mayo knocked him out. But it's now fourth down and about ten. Yeah, a, a good positive play by Air Force, but when you need 20 yards, it's hard to count on a pitch play with that much speed on the field running by it to get 20 yards. So fourth down and about 11. Jonathan Hefney will be back. Chris Carp will punt. Oh. Terrible punt off the side of his foot almost hit the Tennessee player goes out of bounds at the 40 and the volunteers will have great field position with 959 to go in the game. An 18 yard punt for Chris Carr. And with that we'll take a timeout under 10 minutes to go in the game Tennessee in control in Knoxville. Tennessee with the lead and the football 959 to go. This may have been a scary scary week of preparation for coach Fulmer and Air Force certainly has lived up to it but his team is responding. Artist is still in a tail play action. Ainge being pressured and he throws it intended for Austin Rogers but he was being chased. Eric does a smart thing just get rid of the football and live to play another play. Second down. Unfortunately, that did stop the clock. 9:42 to go. Balls have it second down at the 37. Ainge straight drop. Look, fires it. Caught at midfield. Swain makes the grab. Jason Swain with the reception picks up 17, and the Volunteers get another first down. Bobby Giannini makes the tackle. He does a good job of buying some time here, sliding to his right. Air Force in the secondary, they just, they're not good enough at, play, at playing zone. I mean, if you give Ains time, his receivers are going to find those open areas. That's what happened there. He bought a little time. Receivers slipped to the inside. They just couldn't cover. There's Swain. Six catches, 74 yards, and a touchdown. Uh -oh. this Tell you what, Austin Rogers was the recipient of the football on the receiver on the uh, reverse. Let's quickly go down to Mike Stoll. Mike, uh, Randy, real quick. Ramon Foster goes off on crutches on, with ice on his ankle. They move Michael Frog to the guard and Josh McNeil at center. Randy, quick drop, Ainge pass caught. Meacham gets some yardage. They mark his forward progress for about a four-yard pickup. Austin Randall brings him down for the Air Force. That's another slow whistle. You know, you catch that ball and your forward motion is, is around that point and they start pushing you back. That whistle's got to be blown. Uh, otherwise, you know, you take a lot of chances of injuries standing up a guy like that and let other people hit him. 305 yards through the air now for Eric Ainge, and we still have eight minutes to go in the game. Third down and seven. Deep pass caught Rogers inside the 15. First down, volunteers. Austin Rogers with a reception from Eric Ainge. Bobby Giannini saved the touchdown for the Falcons. Yeah, beautiful throw by Ainge down the middle of the field. Rogers runs a nice route down, down the hash mark and then bends it in behind the safety. Gives Ainge a good target to throw to in front of the safety. A perfect pass. Another nice catch by Austin Rogers. First down, Tennessee at the 19, or actually the 14 yard line. There's Josh McNeil, the center, and Michael Frog has moved to guard. Tennessee 9 for 11 on third down conversions. And Coach Fulmer was out on the field trying to. You know what I like? The best thing about this is David Cutcliffe has not taken his foot off the gas. Nope. And another penalty marker. 
This one is going to be a procedure penalty against Tennessee. And after almost flawless first half, we've had a first down and 20. Ames, play action. Back to throw. Intercepted at the 10. Air Force gets the interception, and they bring it back to the 20-yard line. 6.35, that is the first interception. Julian Madrid gets the pick. Well, Eric got lure, lured in to feel a little too comfortable throwing that ball over the middle of the field. He's had great success tonight. Runs the play action, gets caught looking play side, and loses the backside linebacker who just slips in under the throw and makes the interception. 12-yard return, so Air Force gets it at the 22. First down and 10. Carney pitches back to Hall. Got some blockers. Here's Hall. First down into Tennessee territory at the Tennessee 47. First down for the Falcons. I believe it is. First down inside Tennessee territory. Air Force coming back. Carney's pass caught. Another first down at the Tennessee 35. He just found Decker in the hole. Made a nice throw. At the 35, they give it to Williams, and that's going nowhere. Might have gotten a foot. Scott Peoples, the fullback. Stopped by JT Mapu. And I believe that's his first carry tonight. Gain of a yard, second down nine. Tennessee did a good job of stopping that. Jay West Brown, redshirt freshman, was in on that play also. Here's Carney. Back to throw. It's incomplete. Intended for Chad Smith. The slot back. Yeah, he threw that ball where it needed to go because Anton Stewart was out there in coverage. He he throws that ball at the receiver. Stewart's probably got a chance to break in there, either break that play up or have a chance at interception. Carney now four out of six, 68 yards through the air. Third down, nine. Here's the pitch. Goes to Smith. Huge hole. Tennessee stops him, but he gets the first down inside the 25. They're going without a huddle. 449. Clock moving. First down. Quick pitch. And he's hammered. Xavier Mitchell got to him and knocked him down for a loss of about three. Well, that's a play Tennessee needed. Uh, they're, they're running a hurry up offense and Nothing slows a hurry up offense down more than negative plays. Xavier Mitchell did a good job of knifing through and stopping that pitch play that's giving us so much trouble. Clock moving, 417. There's the handoff. They go to the fullback. Not much there. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Turk McBride and Marvin Mitchell. Scott Scott Peoples. Gain of two, and it's third down and about 10. Timeout, George Air Force. First charge timeout of the second half. Air Force calls a timeout. That stops the clock with 4.05 to go here in the fourth quarter. And we'll take a break with them. Four minutes, five seconds to go in the game. It's Tennessee 31, Air Force 17. We'll be back to Knoxville in just a moment. All right, here we go. The last 4.05, it's third down 11. Air Force has converted seven out of ten third down conversions. And uh, the shot clock is down to zero. Well, and now they're letting it huddle. Well, there's always more college football programming. We'll talk about it later. Now they come to the line. Third and 11. Carney keeps it. Nope. They gave it to the fullback. Ryan Williams was in the game. Got about two. It's fourth down. He should have kept it. Yeah. Now we'll talk about the uh, football programming. There's more of it in store on CSS. Be sure to bookmark CSS-sports.com and check it off for all the college football programming on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. 
fourth down and ten. Tennessee's one out of one. Air Force, this is their first attempt. There's a pass. It's caught. He has the first down unless he stepped out shy. It's going to be close. He picked up 11. He needed 10. Antoine Stewart shoved him out of bounds, but I believe he got it, and he did. Carney did. He found it, got him the big first down. 19 first downs for Air Force. It's at the Tennessee 18. There's the big fullback up the middle. He's at the five. He's got a first down. No, he's shy of the first down. Chad Smith picks up eight. And that clock is running. It's running. The line of scrimmage is the five-yard line. And a nice draw play to Chad Smith. Takes it up the middle of the field. Tennessee did stop it short. Here's Carney, pitch it. Gets it to the pitch man. He goes out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. He's going to be short of the first down by about a foot. But he did get out of bounds to stop the clock. Ryan Carl was there to knock him out. And also Jonathan Hefney, as you see right there, defending for Tennessee. How you doing? Thanks. Third and a foot. Well, you have a situation where Air Force could score and go for an onside kick, but their kicking game has given Tennessee trouble. Well, I would think that's probably, depending on how much time they got left, they haven't had much luck stopping Tennessee. That might be the best option. Carney hands it off, touchdown. Ryan Williams up the middle, three yards, hardly anybody touched him, and it's 21 to 23. But Tennessee has played almost four quarters of defensive football. And to be honest, still hasn't fixed, figured out this flex ball. They hit you with one thing, you take it away, they hit you with another. Very efficient offense. Zach Sasser will attempt the extra point. That'll make it a seven point game. He does. 31 24, 241 to go in the game. Now, if you're Air Force, you've got to make a decision. Do we go for an onside kick, or do we kick it to them and try to hold them? Something that they have not done all night. Well, they have two timeouts left. So they, th with 2.40 left, they may feel like they can go ahead and kick the ball off, give it to Tennessee, and we're going to try and run the ball, and they might can stop it twice if they make a defensive stop and get it back. Uh, don't know what's going through uh, DeBerry's mind, but I, I believe I'd go for the onside kick personally. No, I, I think so too. Let's go down to Mike Stoll, see what he thinks. Yeah, Randy, they're, 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 they're talking about that in the huddle right now, but before that, the offensive line, Ainge came over to him and said, hey guys, you got to give us a couple of yards. We'll just pick it up, move the chains a couple of times. And we're going to walk out here with the win. Great leadership that he's showing right now for this offensive team, Randy. Tennessee's got the hands team in there because they have Lucas Taylor up front. And also they have, well, there's a number of uh, receiver types up tight. Yeah, they're going to, you know, there's no way they're going to go for an onside kick. And I guarantee you they practice this a lot and they, they have a great kicker with their pooch and onside kicks. Bobbled, bobbled, recovered by Air Force, I think. Yes, they do. with a football number 20 for the Air Force and that is Daniel Hill. He's a backup Falcon. And now Air Force has got the ball back. They're down one score, 236 to go. Yeah, perfectly executed onside kick, kicks it over to the left side. Good to see who had a chance to catch that ball. Well, there was nothing he could do the way that ball was bounced. Yeah, it just Perfect. bounced right off his shoulder. It's a sweet wide. Tennessee's going to clobber him. He picks up a couple. The clock is moving with 229. Four yard pickup, second down and six. Ryan Carl makes the tackle. 
Well, as I said, Air Force still has two timeouts. 220 is plenty of time. Second down, six. Inside, they hammer it. They smothered it. Stop it. Nothing. Third down, Xavier Mitchell, who has made some big time plays in this quarter, was the guy making the tackle for Time a yard out. loss. Air Force, that's her second charge timeout of the second half. And it's a timeout with 1.59 to go. And they have one timeout left after this one. It's getting interesting, isn't it, Randy? Well, I knew they were going to go for that onside kick. I, you know, because they have, they have no way of stopping Tennessee with, for two minutes, really, when you think about it. And the only chance they have to get the ball back. Well, you're right. Uh, you know, Ainge, the only way they could have stopped Tennessee was if Tennessee decided to just grind it on the ground and let them stop them. Right. But if, they, if David Cutcliffe decided to go ahead and go after him. They had no shots. You're right. Well, look at Coach Chavis' headset. That's, a, that's a, what you do with you. That's what happens to you when you play Air Force. Here's a look. Yeah. There's the draw play. Taking it straight up the field. Sets him up for this. That's your fullback. Williams taking it in for the touchdown. Big play coming up, third down and eight. Fans getting into it. Carney back. Got the pass caught and out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Justin Handley makes the reception. And watch right. Stepped up and threw it beautifully. Hmm. That's not good. And Inky Johnson is down on the field in the after a 24-yard gain, and this is this is not good. Inky Johnson. some of his family down on the field with him. Well, the ambulance is ready. The thing they like about it is they're getting yards every time. Jonathan Hefney tonight has had 13 tackles. Second down and five. It's at the 26. Here's Carney back to throw got a man wide open and he is down at the one now the penalty markers on the field strong did a good job of finding that void area over there between the corner and the safety and Carney did what he's been doing all night he made the play he needed to make found his receiver for the big play. First and goal from the one. Carney, touchdown. Ryan Williams. And Air Force is one point away from tying it, but would they possibly go for two? You know, in this case, I think they're going to go for one because if you do have to go to overtime, you know, each team gets it at the 25 yard line, and they've been pretty effective offensively, so. That's just a simple give to uh, Williams, the fullback, straight up the middle. They're not going to kick it. They're going to go for two. Well, I can't say I disagree with it. You're on the road. Uh, you're playing supposedly a superior football team. This might be your just best chance to win the football game right here. They're going for two with a minute 35 to take the lead. Carney pitches back. Tennessee stops him at the five. Xavier Mitchell, who has made one great play after another in this quarter, gets it done for the Volunteers. 
That is a huge defensive play. Ran the sweep, same play they've had a lot of success with. I thought we'd see the option, Randy. They, they, we haven't stopped them on the option the whole second half. Instead, they went to the sweep. Xavier Mitchell read it perfectly, nice through, made the tackle in the backfield. Third tackle of the night, but it's his biggest. And all three tackles he's made tonight have been tackles for loss. Well, <laughs> he's a player. I mean, he, he makes he, he's made some big plays tonight. Now, Tennessee's going to get the football back. Minute 35 to go, and I believe Air Force only has one timeout left. Well, you know they're going to go for an onside kick. Oh, yeah, they I definitely no got question. an onside kick. Tennessee's got to cover this one. Xavier Mitchell is a shot as he gets a drink of water. They're lining everybody up on the left, just like they did last time. And the way that ball bounced, there was no way anybody could catch it. Similar, similar, and Air Force has got it again. But a penalty marker is on the field around the line, and it, they may have to make them kick it again. You know, that was perfect, and that's not played very well by Tennessee because the Air Force guy caught that ball just at the 10-yard 10 10 right. mark. Tennessee guy's got to come up and make a play on that football. You can't let Air Force run in front of you and catch that ball. Offside on the kicking team. We'll re-kick five-yard penalty. Well, Air Force kicks their onside kick just the way they run their offense. Perfect. Uh, you, you said it earlier. I guarantee you they've really worked on this a lot. Right. Yeah, got it. The kicker's right. Just. That yeah, was perfect. It was perfect. They don't get much better than that. Yeah. The kick was perfect. The formation obviously wasn't because they're offside. But they got it again. And with 130 to go. Air Force is a field goal away from winning the football game if they get this kick. Bounced again. Tennessee's got this one. The Volunteers catch it inside the 45 yard line. That time the bounce went the way of Jason Swain. And that might have been the biggest catch he's made all night. He's made some good ones, but you're right. That is the biggest catch he's made tonight. Charge Air Force. That's their second time out of the second half. Hey, those are tough things to catch. That's like a, that's a knuckleball. That thing's coming high speed, bouncing all over the place. You've got to really watch that football in. Swain makes a big play there. Tennessee came into the game about a three touchdown favorite in the game and they're going to be very lucky to get out of here with a one point win and I think Coach Fulmer would take it right now. Oh he'll take it. Air Force is going to be able to stop the clock one time. If I'm not mistaken Tennessee can run this thing out. I just deal with that. Air Force has taken well, their last time out. That's the last time out for Air Force so there's no way they can stop the clock. No. And Tennessee will probably take a knee. Why would Air Force take a timeout now? Well, I guess, I, well, they take it now because they, the new rules, they start right. the clock. Yeah, they do. Yeah, that's right. So uh, either way, they had to take it. Well, it's been an exciting, a strange, I guess we could sit here all night and come up with ways to describe the way this game has gone. But volunteers will line it up at the 43 yard line of Air Force. And Ains will probably have to take a knee three times, and that's it. And they're sending two receivers left. Ames runs it to the left and takes a knee at the 50. Runs a little clock. Clock's going to continue to move. There's no way Air Force can stop it. Well, Fisher DeBerry 
and there's a look at him. He knew that he, you know, you're on the road, so you go for two a lot of times in those situations anyway, but he knows his defense cannot stop Tennessee. They got, they stopped him one time all night. It was on an interception. And just like the onside kick with two and a half minutes to go, the only way he had was get exactly. the ball back in his team's hands. He knew that if he could get a two point conversion, he well, had a chance to win the game. Well, and also his offense had great momentum. Yeah. You know, they were positive play after positive play. So he had no reason not to think that they couldn't come up with another three yards. Uh, unfortunately for him, Xavier Mitchell blew that deal up. And as they mark the football for play for the final time, Tennessee will not have to take the snap. The Volunteers survive. Barely. A good way to put it. 31 to 30. As Coach Fisher DeBerry and Coach Philip Fulmer meet at midfield, the Volunteers get the win, but they have lost several key players with injuries, and one that we're still concerned about that's Inky Johnson, who went down with a serious looking injury to his head or neck or something we we don't have any information because it happened late in the game but if we get something of course stay tuned to ball radio those of you are listening on pay-per-view will have the latest information on Inky Johnson well they're they're beating in midfield for their post-game prayer and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll promise you Inky Johnson is mentioned yep Tennessee gets the win 31 to 30 over Air Force in a nerve wracking football game tonight here at Neyland Stadium to say the least. But the Volunteers are 2 and 0 with Florida coming to town next Saturday here at Neyland Stadium. And we'll be back in just a moment. Tennessee gets the win 31 30 over the Air Force and my goodness if Air Force had a defense they would be tough. Yeah, you hit it right on hit the nail on the head. If they had a defense, they would be tough because they've got all the offense they need. You know, they lost two wide receivers off that team from last year that totaled 1,400 yards and like 70 some catches. Didn't seem to bother them a bit. They didn't use their wideouts, but a couple times. But they sure hurt us with the quarterback, the tailback, oh the fullback, the pitch. You know, they just kept Tennessee off balance all night. Very few, if any, of these players have a chance to go to the NFL. If they did have that chance, they still have a five year military commitment before once they graduate from the Air Force. Well, that's why the Air Force and the, well, and the other service academies have a hard time recruiting your, your so called blue chip athlete. Uh, because, you know, if Ohio State comes to you and says, I want you to come play football for me, and, and Air Force says, I want you to come, but you got to give me. <laughs> Five years after, after school, you, yeah. you know, what are you going to do? So uh, they get a special type of kid, uh, and you could tell it by watching them tonight. I, that's a disciplined bunch of guys and uh, a tough bunch of guys. They played a great football game. Well, let's check in one more time with Mike Stoll. Mike? Well, Randy, I'm getting surrounded by Air Force tonight, as Tennessee did on defense. You think about the offense for Tennessee, no punts tonight. Colquitt didn't have to kick the ball, and yet, Air Force still executed well. We knew they were going to have problems with that wishbone. They executed it exceptionally well. But the biggest thing in this is you wonder about the injuries. What's going to come out of this? Justin Harrell, Ramon Foster, Arian Foster, all these guys are getting banged up. And you've got a big one next week. And this is just one that you got to look at and you got to think, OK, wishbone offense, let's put this behind us. Now, Tennessee, you got to take some, some good confidence out of them moving the football offensively. All right, thank you very much, Mike. And Eric Haynes, what a night he had offensively. He made one interception as he did last week, but altogether, Ainge statistically on the night was 24 of 29. One interception, career high 333 yards and three touchdowns. That's seven touchdown passes. Yeah, a very good night for Eric Keynes. I was, in, I, I was more impressed with him tonight than I was last week. You know, he had four touchdowns. He had three tonight. But he made a number of throws tonight that were big-time throws. I mean, he stood in there, bought himself a little time, and threw the ball, you know, on the line right where he was supposed to be. 
And, and when he didn't have it, he, just like last week, he, he made a smart move of just getting rid of it. All right, thank you, Pat Ryan. Tennessee gets the win, 31 to 30 tonight over the Air Force. They're 2 and 0 with Florida coming to town next week. So, for Pat Ryan and Mike Stoll, this is Randy Smith at Neyland Stadium saying good night from Big Orange Country. Tune in for spending.